to then uh, definition of uh, the elements of the financial statement and which uh, we have already discussed about uh, uh, the asset yeah, elements of financial statements first we have discussed about the assets uh, now we will move to the liabilities Yeah, the liability, the definition of uh, liabilities in the conceptual framework is given as uh, liability is a uh, uh, obligation. A liability is a present obligation of the entity. So note that it's a present obligation, not future. It's a present obligation. Uh, of the entity and arising from the past event and the settlement of uh, which is expected to result in an outflow from the entity of resources embodying economic benefits here this uh, definition consists of uh, mainly three points the first point is uh, the, to consider a thing as a liability it should be presently available it's a present obligation at present we have to give something to somebody else and arising uh, due to the past events uh, it's this obligation this obligation arises due to the past transaction or past events and when settle the liability when settle the obligation uh, it may result in outflow of uh, monetary, monetary benefit economic benefit so in in the form of cash in the form of any other assets or increases in liability so in that manner uh, now we'll discuss in detail what do you mean by uh, present obligation what does it mean about present obligation right an essential characteristic of uh, liability is that uh, the entity has a present obligation at present in at the, at the time of presenting the balance sheet on that date it should have an obligation not the future an obligation is a duty obligation is a duty or responsibility to act or perform in a certain way obligation may be legally enforceable as a consequence of a binding contract or statutory requirement so if you purchase inventories on credit basis so it means you are binding in a contract that uh, you have to pay some amount of money for the purchase of inventory to the creditors the suppliers if you get loan from the bank you have to pay an installment you have to pay some installments so it's an obligation so this is normally the case for example with amount payable for goods and services received normally companies are purchasing inventories on credit basis for that suppliers will uh, give them uh, uh, 30 days or 60 days or three months like that so in within that period they have to settle so it's an obligation so at first it means if once they have purchased on credit basis now it's become a obligation to pay obligation also arises however the normal business practices custom and desires to maintain a good business relation or act in an equitable manner right? obligations arise normally obligations arises uh, on uh, normal business practices sometimes uh, to maintain their uh, good name goodwill they have to sometimes it's make an obligation for example an entity decides uh, as a matter of policy to rectify faults in a product even when these become apparent after the warranty period has expired the amounts that are expected to be expended in respect of goods already sold are liabilities 
normally uh, what the practice is uh, when customers uh, purchase an item along with warranty say two years two years warranty if there are any cases any folds on that product within the warranty period so it's an obligation of to the company to give some solution for them there will be some expenses will occur if it is if it is happened within the uh, within the warranty period anyhow company a particular company has a policy company has a policy even the warranty period expert the company will do some for the betterment of the customers it's a policy so for so even though it's a policy it's a custom no it's here it's a, it's a it's a habit of the company so it's even though the warranty period exceeds the past the company a particular company should have some sort of uh, provisions to spend to spend that sort of fault so it says it's even though the warranty period is gone up gone out and uh, still company has an obligation to uh, settle that kind of fault distinctions a distinction need to be uh, drawn between a present obligation and future commitment to consider liability it should have a present obligation right present obligation uh, and uh, the future commitments future commitment also a decision by the management of an entity to acquire asset in the future does not itself give rise to a present obligation so in the future they have now the company decides to purchase and asset in the future but there is no such uh, still the assets are not come and the, the purchasing process are still not yet started but anyhow they have decided say the value of the asset uh, 10 million but purchasing product purchasing process not started so at this moment the company is unable to disclose the 10 million as liability because it's a future it's it, it is not a present obligation it's not a present obligation an obligation normally arises only when the asset is delivered no the asset is not delivered so therefore we cannot consider that as an uh, liability the obligation normally arises only when the asset is delivered or the NT, entity enters into an irrecoverable agreement to acquire that asset. So, irre irrevocable, right? Irrevocable agreement. So, they can't uh, return back. So, they have promised that they are going to purchase a particular asset from a particular supplier. So they can't breach the contract. So anyhow, they have to purchase. For that, they have to make some sort of arrangements. So it's kind of a liability. So that's called it's a future commitments. It's a future commitment. You already agreed to buy a particular asset. So it's a future commitment. For that also, you have to uh, disclose as a liabilities. The present obligation as well as a future commitment in later case it's mean a future commitment and it recoverable it recoverable agreement the recoverable nature of the agreement means that the economic consequences of failing to honor obligations for example because of the existence of substantial penalty leave the entity with little if any discretion to avoid the outflow of resources to another party so if they are unable to honor the obligations 
it will lead to a severe penalty for them severe penalty for them they already agreed to purchase an asset if they do so if they so they have ended the contract this contract cannot be reversed back we irrecoverable so they are oh, it's a future commitment so future commitment so in case if they are paid to honor their agreement their contract it will end up with a severe uh, penalties and the liabilities the second point is arising from the uh, past transaction or event arising from past transactions and events so liabilities result from past transactions or other past events for example the acquisition of good and the use of service given give rise to the trade payable say you purchase inventories on credit basis you already purchase on credit basis it's a transaction it's a transaction <coughs> and the receipt of bank loan result in an obligation to repay the loan you may uh, take a loan from a bank so it's an event or it's a transaction due to this transaction or event you you are obligated to pay something so this obligation arises due to the past event that is you have you taken a loan from the bank so it's a past event due to that past event you you have to pay installments and uh, and you have to repay the loan an entity may also recognize future rebates based on annual purchases by customers as liabilities in this case the sale of the goods in the past is the transaction that gives a rise to the liability a future rebates for example when you purchase a bulk items when you purchase items in bulk the supplier will give you a voucher it will give you a future voucher say for example uh, a shop in your area a small food city you know in your area uh, make an advertisement that if you purchase above 5000 if you purchase above 5000 we will give you a 500 rupees worth vouchers so to promote their sales they have uh, given this kind of rebates so they will issue they will issue vouchers in future period the customers will come up with these vouchers and they will submit you we have to give goods or something like this, something equivalent to that worth of the vouchers but the customers will not pay you they will submit the voucher that time you have to deliver the company had to give items so it's an obligation so this obligation arises to due to what it's a past promotion the entity may also recognize future rebate based on the annual purchases by customer as liabilities in this case the sale of sale of the goods in the past in the transaction that gives rise to the liability uh you can find uh, what you call uh, star points you can get star points when you purchase a cloth textiles apparel garments in a particular uh, shops they will give you star points so star points is an obligation it's a liability in their uh, transaction in their balance sheet and settlement uh, creates resource outflow so the third point is when you settle the liability when you uh, honor the liability there will be a uh, resource outflow resource outflow this resource may be in the form of cash or cash equivalent or any other form of assets or, or it may reduce their uh, liabilities the settlement of the future obligation the settlement of a present obligation usually involves usually involves the entity giving up they have to lose they have to giving up resources 
embodying economic benefits in order to satisfy the claim of the of other entity of other entity the settlement of a present obligation settlement of a present obligation may occur in number of ways for example payment of case payment of case you purchase items inventories on credit basis so it's an obligation it's a liability so when you settle the liability you may settle the liability in the form of cash cash payment in the form of other assets you may give them a check or other uh, sometime you may settle that uh, settle that uh, credit liability by paying inventories you can return the inventories to them or you can substitute you can exchange something else provision of services for that uh, you are unable to pay that then you may uh, give service service for them when you give services you will not be charged but anyhow they will reduce their uh, they will reduce their uh, due amount from you and replacement of uh, that obligation with another obligations replacement of that obligation with another obligation you already you are a fall in a credit to settle that credit again you are uh, fall in the credit to settle the loan you again you get the loan so like that is that so conversion of obligation to equity say you are unable to settle their money settle their uh, liabilities so what you can do uh, easily convert the creditors into equity holders convert the uh, debt holders into the equity holders now already they they treated as a creditor now uh, after the conversion of equity conversion to equity they will be treated as a owner an obligation may also be extinguished by other means such as credit waiving or uh, forfeiting its rights you know, sometimes the people the companies are what do you call waiving way, way of so they decided we are unable to collect the money from them so like uh, for example uh, bad debt bad debt so what is bad debt in our point of view we sold some item for our customers we are unable to collect money from them so that time we way off their credit so for us it's called uh, bad debt for them it calls uh, credit waiving now we uh, move to the third element as equity equity is very simple as equity is equal to total assets minus total liabilities so equity is the residual is the balance equity is the balance residual interest in the assets of the entity the assets of the entity after deducting all its liabilities all its liabilities sub classified we can further based on the conceptual framework we can further divide the equity sub classified although equity is defined as a residual as a balancing figure total assets minus liabilities the the balance that's called residual defined as residual it may be sub classified in the balance sheet and shown separately so under the equity you may find uh, different categories for example fund contributed by shareholders uh, stated capital stated capital retained earning so due to the uh, normal course of business the the entity earns some profit this profit is belongs to their owners undistributable profit so it's what uh, retained earning retained earning reserve representing appropriations of retained earning you may find some reserves general reserve and other reserves right so for a particular purposes they are accumulating their earnings so what uh, the reserves the reserve repos representing appropriation of retained 
earnings and the reserves representing capital maintenance adjustment capital maintenance adjustments as like uh, revaluation of assets and so when we value the asset sometime the market value of the asset may be is higher than the book value so that time so it's it should it should be treated as a gain so it will be shown in shown separately in the balance sheet as what uh, reserves representing capital maintenance adjustments like uh, revaluation reserve so that will be that will be shown in here and uh, under the equity such classifications uh, can be relevant such classification can be relevant to the decision making needs so think about so when the equity is not uh, subdivided so how the investor how the users of the financial statement take decision how so to get better decision to better inform the equity is subdivided further so the users can easily understand how much uh, retained earnings available how much reserve is available what happened to our equity so this kind of information they will get based on this they can get a timely decision uh, such classifications can be relevant to the decision making needs of the users of financial statement when they indicate a legal or other restrictions on the ability of the entity to distribute or otherwise apply to its equity you know uh, based on the companies act according to the companies act the company can distribute dividend from their retained profit from their retained profit so they can't uh, distribute dividend from their reserves so the reserves are is already uh, created for the another purposes so that kind of reserves cannot be used for distribution of dividend so if there is no classification uh, it is very difficult to implement that legal points also so they may also reflect the fact that parties with ownership interest in an in an entity have deferring the rights in relation to the receipt of dividend or the repayment of contributed equity the shareholders contributed on uh, contributed to the company's uh, entities capital so they have rights if company uh, generate profit the shareholders have a rights to get dividend but they have to understand uh, from which amount from which amount they are entitled to get dividend so it's obvious they are entitled to to get dividend from their retained profit and distributable profit not from the reserve or not from the stated capital to implement this kind of uh, legal points account standard restrictions equity should be classified sub classified <coughs> the creation of reserves is sometimes required by statute or other laws in order to give the entity and its creditors an added measure of production from the effect of losses uh, for example uh, uh, provision uh, for the, uh, provision for the entity uh, made provision for the purpose of uh, employee benefits employee benefits or uh, to meet unexpected loss so that kind that kind of instances uh, companies should survive companies entities should survive for that purpose for the contingencies for for emergency cases they made some sort of reserves these reserves may be required by some law and uh, sometimes the company uh, issued bond to the public to get a loan capital to to settle that loan to settle that uh, bond they may create a sort of reserve so this kind so this kind of uh, 
provisions will help companies to protect from uh, some risky periods uncertain periods other reserves may be esta established if national tax law a grant exemption from or restriction in taxation liabilities when transfer to such reserves are met the existence and size of legal statutory and tax reserves is information that can be relevant to the decision making needs of the users the existence of the existence and and the size of this legal statutory and tax reserves is information is information that can be relevant to the decision making needs of users so if they sub so this kind of uh, uh, information is very important to the uh, users so based on the information they can understand how much a uh, tax payable we, how much tax, tax obligation we have uh, what are the uh, uh, tax exemption we have how much uh, grant we have taken so that kind of information they can take transfer of such reserves are appropriations of retained earning rather than expenses transfers to such reserves so reserves means mentioned here so some reserves are required by the law legal provisions transfer to such reserves are appropriations of retained earning rather than expenses so uh, these uh, provisions this provision for reserves should come from retained earning it it cannot be charged as an expenses it's not an expense so they have to uh, make they have to make reserves from their retained profit not not from the normal cost of expenses business expenses it's not a business expenses so when they do like that when you uh, do reserves when they when they make reserves from expense what will happen what will happen they will artificially show that the company is making loss company is making loss and they artificially uh, artificially uh, give a misinformations the company the entity will give misinformation or mis statement to their tax authorities the amount at which equity is shown in the balance sheet is depend on the measurement of assets and liabilities measurement of assets and liability when the assets are measured in uh, market value rather than the book value this time the book, uh, the market value of the assets may increase maybe higher prices so this time uh, when calculate the total assets it will give a higher amount then when we deduct liabilities then the balance figure the residual value is equity then that value will be higher <coughs> normally the aggregate amount of equity only by coincide coincidence coincidence that right? coincidence uh, with aggregate market value of the shares of of the entity or the sum that could be raised by disposing of either the net assets or uh, piecemeal basis or the entity as whole ongoing concern basis ongoing concern basis right it means uh, what what they wanted to emphasize here is uh, the market value of the equity can be evaluated by the market price of the share say the company is having 10 10000 shares the market price of the shares is 100 now how much the market value of of the equity how much market value of the equity 
10,000 into 100. How much? How much 10,000 100? How much? It's a 1 million. No? It's why, is it 1 million? 10,000 into 100? How much? It's 1 million, no? Right. Uh, so one way is uh, they can get the market price and uh, multiply it by number of shares available in the company. The second way is uh, they can get uh, how much when they when they sell all the assets when they dispose all the assets how much they can get when they sell the entity for somebody else how much they can realize they can sell their assets on piecemeal basis or part by part or as a whole they can get they can sell their total assets at a time at a time so two ways one way is the, how to calculate the equity the first way is take the market value of the share into number of shares so in in another way so how, what is the value? What is the value of uh, market price? So not market price, how much we can realize? How much an entity can realize when they set all the assets and uh, all the assets and liabilities. So normally aggregate amount of equity only by coincidence, co correspondence with aggregate market value of the shares of the entity or the sum that could be raised by disposing selling of either net assets on a, a piecemeal basis or in the the entity as whole ongoing concern basis commercial industrial and business activities are often undertaken by means of entities such as sole proprietorship, partnership, and trust, and various type of government business undertaking. Right? So commercial activities, commercial business activities is funded by a single person. That's the time it calls as uh, proprietorship, sole property. Sometimes a partnership. Uh, two or more people come together, and they may register it as a company or or trust or sometimes it belongs to the government anyhow who is uh, whoever contribute their capital is called equity the legal and regulatory framework for such entities the legal and regulatory framework for such entities is often different from that applying to corporate entities right uh, the legal and regulatory framework for such entities it's many uh, whether it's a company or it's a partnership or the uh, government corporation or government department whatsoever so it decided by the legal and regul regulatory framework for such entities is often different from that applying to corporate entities right uh, corporate entities company it's different from uh, the sole property ship partnership like that for example there may be few if any restrictions on distribution to owners or other beneficiaries of the amount included in the included in the entity so when we talk about the companies they are very restrict very they are uh, when we talk about company uh, it has more uh, restrictions on the distribution of equity among the among the shareholders uh, right uh, but when we talk about uh, uh, sole proprietorship and uh, partnerships it does not have uh, that uh, degree of restrictions 
Nevertheless, the definition of equity and other aspects of conceptual framework that deal with equity are appropriate for such entities. Right? Definition of equity and other aspects of the conceptual framework that deal with in equity are appropriate for such things. So it's based on the uh, legal framework of the com legal framework of the entity. It will be should be represented as such. Now we already talked about uh, assets, liabilities, and equities. So those three items are coming under uh, balance sheet. Now we will move to the uh, performance income is income statement profit is uh, frequently used as a measure of performance or as the basis for other measures such as return on investment or earning per share so this kind of stuff we are used to measure the performance of the company normally the the companies and entities, business entities performance is measured in terms of profitability. Profitability is the most important indicator, most important indicator to measure the performance of the entity. Profit is frequently used as a measure of performance or as the basis for other measures we have. So, return on asset return in return on investment earning per share return on assets uh, and we have lot uh, ebit uh, profit before tax profit after tax profit before uh, tax and depreciation so that there are, there are measures right so mainly all the, all of them are dealing with profit the elements directly related to the measurement of profit are income and expenses. So this income and expenses are directly impact on profit. When revenue increases, when in income increases, profit will be increased. And when expenses increases, our profit will be go down. The recognition and measurement the recognition and measurement of income and expenses and profit depends dep depends in part on the concept of capital and capital maintenance used by the entity in preparing its financial statement so uh, when they calculate uh, profit profit they also consider about capital and capital maintenance cost the recognition of measurement of in when the recognition and measurement of income and expenses and hence profit income and expenses deals on profit it depends in the part of the concept of uh, capital and capital maintenance capital mean uh, you know assets machineries so capital assets uh, it it takes uh, some sort of cost to maintain that capital maintenance uh, used by entity in preparing its financial statement the elements of income and expenses are defined as follows now we'll be we'll uh, see the definitions of what does it mean uh, what does it in, income? What does it uh, expenses? So income, income is an increase. So it's kind of revenue, no? Think about sales. Interest income, uh, dividend income, right? It it will increase our economic benefit. It will increase our economic benefit. Income is increases in economic benefits during the accounting period in the form of inflow or enhancement of assets so so think about um, think about revenue sales when you make sales the economic economic benefit will inflow say money cash will inflow 
or check will inflow or it enhance enhancement of assets the cash balance will increase inventory balance will increase or receivable balance will increase enhancement of assets or the decrease of liabilities decrease of liabilities that result in increase in equity finally it will impact on equity profit equity equity so profits is, is coming under the equity you no know? so that's why when revenue increases in, uh, equity also increase other than those relating to the contribution from equity participants equity participants means shareholders or owners so without contribute without the contribution of uh, owners if equity increases it mean the profit increases income increase without without contribution of the uh, owners capital if equity increase it means income increases expense is a cost expenses are the cost to to find the profit we have to deduct these expenses from this income so expenses are the decreases in economic benefit are the decreases in economic benefits during the accounting period in the form of outflow in the form of outflow when we are making expenses money will go out it's outflow or depletion of assets or incurrence of liabilities that result in decrease in equity other than those relating to distribution to equity participants so when we make expenses money will go out if we are not paid our money if we are not uh, pay for the expenses our liability will increase say credit purchase when we make purchase on credit basis our uh, credit balance will increase so finally it will impact on equity when more when expenses increases the equity equity balance will be reduced equity balance will reduce so this reduce not due to the distribution of the equity to its owners its shareholders performance the definitions of income and expenses identify the essential features you know so at the beginning of this chapter so this conceptual framework will give the, the definitions will give the features the definition of income and expenses identify the essential features essential features characteristics characteristics but do not attempt to specify the criteria it is not specify the criteria that would need to be met before they are recognized in the income statement so we we will have another section called uh, recognition and measurement first it should meet the definition and it should be measurable and then we can recognize so income and expenses income and expenses may be presented in the income statement in different ways so as to provide information that is relevant to economic decision making so this uh, information on uh, income and expenses we can find in income st statement it is grouped the expenses and incomes are grouped so when you uh, see uh, the income statement you can find uh, administrative expenses where you, you can find uh, there a lot of informations lot of uh, uh, items under the uh, admin expenses auditor ex auditor fees and uh, office head of his rent employee salary manager salary so this kind of stuff you can find under the admin ex admin expenses so they are grouped and revenue also grouped separately right? revenue right Sa sales or revenue or income so other income it's grouped income and expenses may be presented in the 
income statement in different ways so as to provide inf information that is relevant for economic decision making for example it is common practice it is common practice to distinguish between those items of income and expenses that arise in the course of ordinary activities of the entity and those do not so some some a profit may uh, generate using the normal course of business so it's mean uh, buying inventories and selling inventories and they make profit this is normal course of business sometimes they may, they may sell their assets assets mean long term assets so, so, uh, they may sell uh, dispose their plant and machineries so in that uh, time also uh, companies may profit but that is not a normal course of business the distinction is made on the basis uh, that the source of an item is relevant the, so the distinction is made on the basis that source of an item is relevant in evaluating the ability of the entity to generate cash and cash equivalent in the future at the performance normally uh, what the performance mean what the ability to generate profit ability to generate cash inflows for example incidental activities such as disposal of a long term investment are unlikely to occur to recur on regular basis so as i told, as I told you earlier uh, a sale of uh, property plant missionaries are not a normal course of business is abnormal activities so the profit arises from uh, that abnormal business activities should be shown in the income statement separately should be should disclosed should present in the income statement separately because it is not a normal business course normal course of business so that's why in the in the cash flow statement we can find uh, profit uh, profit from operations cash flow cash flow from operations cash flow from investment activities cash flow from finance activities now we are looking at uh, income statement in the income statement we can find uh, uh, we can find uh, what uh, normal cost at, at the top we can find the normal cost of business activities the revenue cost of sales gross profit other income and uh, if there are any cases uh, special case abnormal cases that uh, machine is the assets of the companies are disposed so that kind of things will be uh, not separately extraordinary items like that so when distinguishing between the items in this way consideration need to be given to the nature of the entity and its operations so how do we decide how do we decide it's it's a normal course of business and it's abnormal course of business so how do we decide so it's based on the business so so we are talking about what for example we said uh, i said uh, uh, selling a flop uh, selling long term assets it's a uh, not a normal course of business but for some companies some entities it, it's a business selling asset is a business it's a prime business real estate business so the major business operation is buying and selling assets so that time it's not a extraordinary item not a uh, abnormal items so when distinguishing between the items in this way consideration need to be given to the nature of the entity and its operations items that arise from ordinary activities of one entity may unusual in respect of another so as i told earlier for real estate business companies uh, the buying and selling assets long term asset is the normal business course normal business operations for other manufacturing companies 
of service providing companies? No. Distinguishing between items of income and expense and combining them in different ways also permits in several measures of entity performance to be displayed. So sometime, uh, the, so normally, uh, the company's profit, normal co company's profit arises from normal cost of business will be shown separately and some uh, gains, some gains uh, will be shown profit only separately. So, normal, so normally, so normal cost of business operations, uh, income, revenue, revenue, income, expenses are shown very clearly. They are separate, right? They are very clearly disclosed. For some items, they will disclose their present profit only. Profit only. Yeah, uh, distinct using between item of income and expense and combining them in different ways also permits several measures of NDT performance to display. So uh, these have uh, differing degrees of in inclusiveness. For example, growth ma gross margin. So, so some financial statement we can find directly gross margin. Gross margin, they are not indicate uh, revenues minus cost of sales, no. They are uh, directly uh, so gross pro gross margin gross profit. So they combined this gro gross uh, gross margin combined both income and expenses. So directly they have given gross margin. So it, it yeah we couldn't find how much uh, purchase how much opening balance how much closing balance. So this kind of stuffs we are not considered then we couldn't find. But they are they are combined. They combine uh, revenue sales minus cost of sales equal gross profit. So this so this gross this gross this gross profit combine both revenue and expenses. Profit or loss from ordinary activities before taxation. Profit before tax. Simply profit before tax. Profit or loss from ordinary activities after taxation. Profit after tax. Profit after tax. So these are the figures combining both income and expenses. Profit or loss. Income. You know, income, when you look at the definition, we can find income is increase in economic benefits. Income is increases in economic benefit during the accounting period, during the accounting period. In the form of inflow, in the form of inflows or enhancement of assets. The cash will become and case balance also will go up or in other assets will go up, bank balance will go up. So degrees of liabilities, degrees of liabilities that result in increase in equity, increase in equity other than or those relating to contribution from the equity participants. So uh, the income mean, so as I explained earlier, income will increase their uh, equity, but this increase will not come from contribution from the owner. They are not contribute, they not, they not increase the equity balance by giving additional capital. Income can be divided into two categories. First one, revenue and gains. So revenue we call is a normal cost of business, sales. Sales is a revenue. So gain is uh, normally we say is for uh, capital gain. Capital gain, we purchase an asset uh, and uh, keep the asset for a period of time and we sell the assets and we can get capital. That's called what capital gain. So revenue is considered as a normal cause of business activities arises. Yeah, gains are uh, sometimes maybe normal cause of business or not normal cause of business. Revenue, revenue arises in the course of the uh, ordinary activities of the entity. 
what are the activities of an entity and the example sales fees interest dividend royalties and then it's so normal so revenue gains may or may not arise in a course of ordinary activities but meet the definition of income what's the definition it will uh, it will generate what inflow of cash inflow economic benefit and due to that uh, equity balance will increase here those arising on the disposal of non current assets disposal of non current assets uh, in that sales they are getting capital gain so that is separate gain represent increases in economic benefit as such there is no different in the nature of revenue gains here the gains it's, it's, it's kind of difference gain they present increase in economic benefits as such there is no difference in the nature of revenue so re, when you uh, like so the revenue is a normal course of business hence they are not uh, regarded as constituting a separate element uh, in this conceptual framework the definition of income also include unrealized gain unrealized gain say for example a revaluation of assets revaluation of assets uh, during the revaluation so they are uh, getting uh, some sort of uh, unrealized gain the definition of income also include unrealized gain for example those arising on the revaluation of marketable securities right you purchase shares at 10 rupees now the share price is 25 rupees you have 10000 shares so you can get a 15000 profit but market value has increased so based on the market value you have uh, you have uh, valued realized and, and uh, you have calculated the profit but it is not yet realized not yet realized anyhow it can be uh, meets the definition it meets the definition of revenue income so therefore it can be included in their statements the definition of income also include unrealized gains for example those arising on the revaluation of marketable securities and those relating from increases in the carrying amount of long term assets right long term assets value increase so purchase land at lower price and keep the assets and when we revalue when entity revalue the asset the uh, the price will increase let's say therefore uh, when they revalue they can get unrealized profit when gains are recognized not revenue gains when gains are recognized in the income statement they are usually displayed separately they are usually displayed separately because knowledge of them is useful for the purpose of making economic decisions right so they have to the gain the gain should be shown in the income statement separately otherwise it will mislead mislead their users you know uh, for example company uh, making loss actually the performance of the company is poor very poor loss making company to hide that kind of loss so what management do is they are uh, revalue the assets and that revaluation gain may be supersedes exceeds their loss then at the final amount will be shown as profit so if they if they not separate if they are not if they are not separating between the revenue and the gain then the users are unable to get a clear picture of the organization so therefore conceptual framework guide us to uh, display in separate separately so gains are often reported a net of related expenses so the gains are not reported like this uh, gain so how much the value of the assets how much the cost how much equal depreciation so no 
not that way so they are showing the final figure final amount so how they are not disclosing about how much they sold uh, how much cost how much profit no they are showing only the final value profit but the normal cost of business activities they are shown in detail but the gains are not not uh, normal cost of business therefore they are uh, they are put in the net value various kind of assets may be received or enhanced by income various kind of assets may be received or enhanced by income for example example include cash receivable and goods and services received in exchange for goods and services applied so sometimes we can get the income by using cash or some in the way of receivables or receivable increase or we can get good or sales for exchange for our items in that way income may also result from settlement of liabilities settlement of liabilities so already we have to pay a 50000 now we made some revenue we made some sales for 20000 then now uh, now our balance will be 30000 50000 minus 20000 equal 30000 we are not pay anything but they are reducing their liability for example an entity may provide goods and services to lender right the loan provider lender in settlement of the obligation to repay outstanding loan next expenses 